back at home this morning. Oh, the microphone was almost got away from me. I hope that didn't blast your ear out. Here it is, 6.30 on the morning of Tuesday, the 4th of August, and it's looking great outside. And inside, where it's also, oh, it's now 6.31, this is Rouser Radio coming out of Lewis in East Sussex, in the great United Kingdom. things, silly things, and absolute nonsense from Rouser Radio coming out of Lewis. But what would you do first thing in the morning at 6.32? If you switch on the radio, you can either get pop or you can get news or whatever. But silliness and daftness, no. So turn to Rouser Radio. I did a little check yesterday. You can get Rouser Radio on Mirador Television's website, miradortelevision.com. You can get it on all sorts of places like Spotify and uh, iHeart FM. Uh, you name it, uh, we, we, we're there. Uh, we just got to be found. So if you discover us, pass on. Say, have you ever heard anything so daft in all your life? Come on, uh, uh, please uh, pass it on so that other people can be daft with us. Let's get daft in the morning. Daft and dafter. There's no sense whatsoever. What? Oh, <laughs> the microphone is almost around my neck. <laughs> that's that's what comes of, of trying to do things in a hurry, you see. Uh, never mind, I got it back again. <laughs> if there was a thump, that was where it hit me in the chest. <laughs> that's how daft we can get. Anyway, uh, uh, sort of uh, a, a bit of nonsense, because um, everybody else can be very serious or very musical or whatever. We're none of those things. In fact, we're not anything. Uh, we, we, we don't know what we're going to do on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, but I uh, do sometimes think that we miss what we've got at home. Um, because uh, lockdown is uh, a bit lock-up at the moment, we have a certain amount of freedom, even though the fear of another bout is ever-present. Uh, we are able to sit out and have a drink in the sun, in our local pubs and I have to say that in Lewis the local pubs are observing to the letter social distancing taking the name taking the temperature and all the other things which are required of us if we want to go for a drink nowadays yes it's all changed but I have found that the staff in the pubs that are open now have been uh, quite delightful uh, quite pleasant quite helpful and they do these things with a smile on their face and make you feel welcome uh, that's in Lewis haven't been to a pub elsewhere uh, I suppose that I will eventually just test the waters in Brighton to see what it's like down there, or in Eastbourne, one of the two, and see how they're making out. But in Lewis, pretty damn good. And uh, I sat uh, yesterday, I sat on the roof, uh, the roof terrace of uh, the Rights of Man pub, named after the book or the tract uh, extolling the rights of man in the late 1700s, early 1800s of, uh, by Tom Paine, the philosopher, adventurer, uh, and eventually revolutionary who started the, or uh, triggered uh, the American Revolution, the American War of Independence. Anyway, 
More of that another day. It's about Tom all the time, so we'll try hard not to this morning. Uh, but I sat on the, the roof of that pub, named that. And uh, but the day before, I had actually uh, sat on the uh, little terrace they've got. It's only a little terrace uh, on the sidewalk on the high street in Lewis. And a chap came and sat down a good social distance from me, but we began to to, to natter as one does in a pub, uh, and rather good. Uh, and uh, he was from Brighton, and he said, you know, I love Lewis, I love coming to Lewis, and he started to extol the virtues of Lewis. And here I've been sort of saying, oh, it's a dead town now, it's not coming, oh, what are we going to do to liven it up? Well, I've got lots of visionary ideas that nobody will ever listen to, but nonetheless, uh, it, it had seemed as if the town was becoming uh, a bit moribund, uh, that it, uh, it had lost its character, it had lost its spirit, it had lost its fight, and it is known as a rebellious town. My goodness me, you can read more articles about people from the outside who'd say what a, a peculiar town this, this town is. And it is. And I'm, I'm very proud that it is. <laughs> I don't want to live anywhere that's normal. <laughs> you wouldn't get a radio program out of anywhere that's normal, not one like this anyway. Uh, but uh, he, he sort of saw it uh, through a, a different eye, a set of eyes. And I listened, and I, I was quite intrigued. And I thought, yes, you know... We may, as often happens, a prophet is without honour in his own uh, country, but uh, uh, we tend to denigrate what we've got around us. Oh, it could be better, and look what people have done for this, and what they've done for that. Uh, the fact of the matter is, it ain't a bad town. And as he extolled its virtues, I began to see it in a totally different light. And yes, I'm glad I live here. I'm glad I'm part of it. Oh, I'm its biggest critic. I think that uh, uh, we've got bunch of dickheads in charge of, uh, of, of the, the council matters and that's the district council but then again that's just my view and uh, the wonderful thing is I did a documentary about the history of, of Lewis and one of the things of course is for much of its history as with the rest of the country if you said something like that two or three hundred years ago off with your head hung drawn and quartered and that was what Tom Paine did. He he actually espoused his ideas, and the king didn't like him, and he was charged with treason. To all intents and purposes, I think the charge was actually slightly different. But one of the things about his defence, which he he never stood trial, he was persuaded by friends go back to America, uh, where where you you emigrated to, if you like, or you you exported yourself to uh, some years before. Go back because uh, here you will not stand at the chance of a fair trial. And if you're found guilty, you'll be hung, drawn and quartered, which is a particularly nasty way to die. Uh, so Pom, Tom, uh, eventually uh, protesting, listened to his friends and went back and died in the United States, which he, according to one historian anyway, named the United States. Be that as it may, can't even think why I got onto that now. Yes, it's because this is a rebellious town, and and we follow in his pattern. And I'm sure that his spirit stalks uh, the sidewalks here, uh, grabbing hold of people like me and saying, um, "Oh goodness gracious me, uh, why don't you actually uh, uh, start to be a little bit uh, uh, a bit more rebellious? Uh, why don't you start to get things done?" Well, that, that's what we do do. Like any other town, it's got its staid side. It's got those people who go, tut, tut, tut. How dare you say things like that? But um, it, it's a challenge. And it, it is quite interesting that um, on the television, we, we asked a question, which was more important for a lobby group to be able to break uh, the rules illegally or following rule of law. And it's amazing how many people say, oh, well, you know, it, it, the only way laws are changed is through uh, act, action and uh, direct action and so on and so forth. Well, yeah, that's okay. How about the IRA? Mm -hmm. Just a question. Uh, let's not get too serious this morning. Hey, let's not get too serious. I'm just uh, looking through because I, I picked out a couple of... <laughs> Uh, of likely looking titles this morning I have no idea what they're, uh, they're like but there's one here called uh, A New Orleans Crawfish Boil by the Unicorn Heads now with a title like that I think that all those daring people who are with me this morning <laughs> all six of us <laughs> but growing to eight 
growing to age, steady, steady audience now. I don't know what time of day they listen to it, but <laughs> here we go. Let's see what a New Orleans crawfish boil is like from the unicorn heads. Da -da -da -da. I'm reminded of uh, that song, uh, some say potato and some say potato, some say tomato and some say tomato, and let's make the whole thing or whatever it is. Uh, and here, this is the crawfish boil that we just listened to, and I think it's some say crawfish and some say crayfish. Certainly I think that crawfish are crayfish, and let's hope that they are, because if you've ever had crayfish... It looks like a lobster, but it comes out of the fresh water. Uh, it is quite delicious. Now, I, I'm a crustacean fan. I eat lobster, oysters, crayfish, crawfish, uh, shrimp. Uh, what else do we call those things? Prawns. Yeah, I'll I'll eat anything of that ilk. I, I just love it. I think that it's, it's fantastic food. Uh, but uh, crayfish, particularly, and it, it's. Um, well, I don't know that it's necessarily a French thing, uh, but the best crayfish that I've had is when I've been in France. Uh, although I did get some mini crayfish when I was in Moscow, and there was a restaurant that kept them fresh. Uh, they, they they actually kept a pool, and you went and said, could I have some crayfish, please? And they got a net, and they they got the, the crayfish out of this little pool, and uh, next, next ten minutes or so, there it was on your plate, uh, freshly boiled and cooked and, and superb. And in fact, my friend's who used to take me down to the Datcher on the weekend, the summer cottage, uh, um, my, my friends who were uh, uh, the nuclear sub-commander and his family, uh, wonderful people, uh, they they would uh, quite often, if we were driving now, and say, uh, do you fancy anything this weekend, Keith? And I said, well, I had some lovely crayfish in the week. Ah, and they would stop at a market, and there were thousands of these things crawling around. <laughs> 